on the next Hard Knocks training camp with the Houston Texans. Every year it's always really exciting when one of the players will come into the season ticket office, kind of give everyone a pat on the back for a job well done. JJ came in last week and uh, it was intense, we'll put it that way. I will look up your season ticket. You can talk nice on the phone at home. This is Ticket Tales, ABC, mother always be closing. At first it was really cool. And then it kind of got a little weird. He would just see a security camera, he'd just start working out in the office. Four, six, four, seven, three, three, nine, 50. I guess we're just not used to having such an intense leader around the office. When you're at home, you can take a nice, low key, relaxing job. But when you're in here, I want you to take the big in the world. Nobody comes to our house and dumps harder than we do. I like to think you really made an impact. What's that? Wow! Yeah! know a lot about sports, but I can drink a lot of beer. My motto is simple. C's get degrees. Need a long and appropriate hug? I'm your man. I think I'm smarter than you, because I probably am. Power Cowers for box score. Hello and welcome to the box score. I'm Bronco Los Angeles. They are the Danettes in uh, Milford. Uh, guys, the Texans Pulled off a pretty big upset over the 8-0 Bengals last night. And J.J. Watt was throwing shade at Andy Dalton saying, uh, like, you're a night, like a BB gun and stuff like that. So, McLovin, what was uh, going on here? Was it the overreaction on, Alt, uh, on Dalton's part or were uh, J.J. Watt's comments just uh, too out of place? Uh, I think Andy Dalton overreacted. Um, I thought it was mild trash talking, mild post-show trash talking. But, you know, maybe J.J. Watt would be best served to go go back home, go to NFL.com slash standings, and maybe that would maybe wow. further elucidate the situation. Mm. Oh, wow. Elucidate. <laughs> elucidate and illuminate. Uh, illuminate. J.J. Watt is certainly first team all bro. Now, you had a list of them on today. Paulie, would you rank the guest today in the uh, uh, level of bro-ness? Well, first I'd like to respond on behalf of J.J. and say, like, Neither he or I know what elucidate means, but that's not the kind of words we like get in the way of having, you know, a good time, like, you know, lifting weights, which he does, not me. And I like to imagine, though, that uh, Andy Dalton was like, no, because I am a rifle. It's not like a BB gun. It really is a rifle. <laughs> like, he takes his nickname serious. Right. Like, no, it, it is a rifle. It's not a BB gun. Don't <laughs> say oh, that. Whatever. Oh, uh, we, we turned the red rifle into a red BB gun today. Oh, Stop okay. Stop calling me. Whatever. Guys. He, like, had it written on an index card. That was you the know, dumbest Unfortunately, line. JJ's out saving some kids right now and doesn't have time to respond. <laughs> oh, really? Let me, let me check uh, Getty Images, which I'm sure there's 20,000 photos of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Let's move on. Now, Brock, to answer your question, most bro to least bro on the show today, that's a great question. Now, Matt Stafford is, is he's in the bro, uh, what do they call it? So he's the godfather. He's one of the godfathers of broiness. He's the guy. Uh, yeah, he is a poster boy. So, I'd say next, you know, Kyle Long's right up there. I think Kyle Long's a little more broy than Clay Matthews, because uh, long hair is, is not traditional bro, it's more modern bro. Um, Reggie Miller is surprisingly bro. You know, to stay in Indiana and not go big city, mm -hmm. that's kind of cool. Uh, lives in Malibu, the boo is. Yeah. And that's where, that's where bros aspire to be, where Reggie Miller is. When they're at the frat house <laughs> back at UGA, they aspire to be Reggie it kinda Miller. It kind of feels like you left your brodom behind, though, when you go to the boo, don't you? A little bit, but it, you know. Can a bro be the second best basketball player in his family to his sister? Yeah, because he's too busy doing other things, like you know, yeah. crushing beers and chasing chicks <laughs> and driving around in his Jeep. Yeah, I don't know. For, I think, Reggie, you're stretching there a little bit. Never. Never stretching. All right, well, you kicked uh, things off with the bro parade, Clay Matthews. Uh, he was telling Dan that he thought that uh, Watts' comments may have been premeditated. I mean, on, on one side of the story, you think of the Americana, you know, a Christmas story and how classic it is. And to pull that out is, you know, kind of unbelievable. But are we going to believe that he did that on the spot? Or do we feel like he might have been, you know, had a ghostwriter, you know, like Drake? And, uh, you know, it's not authentic. I don't know. See, what I like about this here is that Clay Matthews uh, said that he hadn't heard the comments, and I believe him. Uh, and so he was able to dive right in right. Uh, and, and analyze it at such a shallow and moronic level that we would just as well. Like, he dove right in with us and, like, 
die, like this is really important. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was immediately at the level, and that's the kind of guy that Clay Matthews is. I, and was, I that, really was it that, that, that strong? You guys think it was that strong and clever a line that it could have been premeditated that he or one of his teammates said, "Hey, why don't you?" Uh, I think there's no question that they that? have been saying that all week. Yeah. Absolutely. I think. Yeah, I agree with Cena. In all seriousness, I'll bet it was just bandied about at some point, yeah. and they knew whoever gets. I don't think they plan whoever gets a chance to say it, but it's probably in the back of your mind. <laughs> yeah, it's like planning an end zone dance. You know all that stuff's premeditated. Yeah. You know that receivers work on that. I would imagine. Yeah, or just give it a thought while you're on the airplane, yeah. maybe. Well, I, I'm sure that Watt's going to end up in uh, Dalton's burn book. See Mean Girls. All right, uh, Matthews also told a story about catching a quarterback for the, the Vikings, Teddy Bridgewater, getting on the plane looking at game film in the offseason. So this made me wonder, uh, Fritzy, uh, I'll ask you this, which Danette works the hardest on vacation? Ooh, I would say uh, among these three guys, I'd probably... Us four guys. Oh, uh, myself included? Mm -hmm. Um... The only reason I would say me is because once it gets to the latter part of vacation, I, I have to dive into you know the guest for when we come back from vacation. But outside of that, we're all planning as it gets close to the end of vacation. Once we're back, we're already thinking of topics and we've already started emailing guest ideas or segments or things we want to uh, cover at least in that first day or first couple of days back from vacation. So it's you know it's it's hard to uh, tell. The only reason I'd really pick me is because there's a you know a bunch of calls and emails and stuff that have to start going out during the second half of a vacation so that we've got uh, a couple of people to talk I to. I like when it'll be the Friday before a week-long vacation. It'll be like Friday at 7 o'clock, and Fritzy will send out like a story that he saw. And and like, a niche story. Like, there's no way that we could possibly talk about this a week and a half later. <laughs> like, it's, it's impossible, but he's he's still there. He's he's right that's there a, with that's it. That's more neurotic. You did it last Friday, like 5 o'clock, you sent a niche little story that I don't think was going to hold till Monday at 9 a.m., yeah. but you had a, a pithy line to go with it. That's why. Yeah. Uh, if, if, I, if I don't have like a clever mock headline kind of thing, the subject line or something Charlie. that could be remotely uh, pithy between, or clever, then it's just sorry a between pithy and clever. waste of time. Let's be fair. All right, well, a man who's always pithy and never takes a vacation from his bronus, Matthew Stafford, called in today, and the boss wasted no time asking him whether or not his hat was backwards or forwards. I think Matthew shows up no hat. We went around the room. Guys thought maybe backwards, maybe forwards hat. I am going to go with no hat, and it's a radio interview, Matt. I'm going to take your word for it. Do you have a hat on? Oh, tough one for you, Dan. I do. <gasps> tough one for you. Forward it's or backwards? Forward. No! It's on forward. It's classy. Classy today. I didn't, uh, Business. didn't want to bro out too hard. Business. Yeah, Paulie. Well, here's the deal. Matthew Stafford is now married, which... Well, that will turn your hat forward quite quickly, if you know what I mean. Maybe you could. Is your wife around? Is that why you can't go hat bat backwards right now? Uh, no, she. Uh, oh. I was actually riding in the car with her, but uh, she's out of the car now, okay. so now I'm safe. I could, if, if I wanted to, I could. I could flip it backwards and be okay. Yeah, could you do that right now? Just, just flip it. Yeah. Just live it up right now, old school. Just happened. Yeah. Yeah. Bam. That yeah. just happened. Yes. That just happened. <laughs> When Matt Stafford said just happened, man, I thought I was going to lose it. I don't know if I was on camera there. But I don't know where Dan's head is. I mean, unless Matt Stafford's in the shower, he's not going to be on the phone with us with his hat not off. And we're, come on, Dan, you're better than that. I, you know, I think this is where he should leave this kind of stuff to us. And, uh, you know, Matt Stafford, he's married now, so the hat's going to go forward a lot more. It shows respect for the wife, the sanctity of the marriage. <laughs> and uh, But, you know, once in a while, if someone asks him to, and it's go time. Don't you wonder what he's thinking now? Like, after he hung up the phone and was like, all right, so, like, I just did that interview. Uh, yeah. Like, but, but it was fun. Like, right, he really right. had was fun, bizarre, but it was, so. like, it's kind of weird. I, and I, uh, I actually turned my hat backwards. There's no cameras or anything. And I believe taking that my he really did. Oh, yeah, I, I absolutely question. believe he did. He's not a poser. He's, he's first team. I think that, in, in seriousness, a guy like Matt Stafford and the other guests that we have on the air love it when we don't talk about their sport because... I don't think Matt Stafford would really love to talk a lot about the two and seven Lions, even though they had a good week. Um, if we did all football, you'd be bored to death. Now, Lions fans may not be bored to death, but unfortunately, we're not playing to just Lions fans. We're playing to an entire country. And, and Clay was probably relieved that we started with here. What do you think of this trash talk between JJ right, Watt right. and Andy Dalton? Instead of what's going on with you guys, three losses in a row, panic time. Absolutely. All right, and be careful when you turn your hat backwards, because somewhere Philo Beto is going to beat the crap out of someone. Come up, the uh, the Danettes talk sleep. And there is a sequel in the makes. There's a sequel to this segment. It's called, uh, oh, the Ram 1500 Eco Diesel. Every truck can climb a hill, haul a trailer, and tow a boat, but not everybody has the most fuel-efficient half-ton truck on the road. That's right. Get more facts at ramtrucks.com. Uh,
God's glory. Ram. Do some things to take care of my body, uh, and then try to get to bed at a decent hour. What's a, what's a decent hour? Uh, I go to bed early. I'm uh, I'm an old man. I try to be asleep by about nine thirty. But what's your wife say? Like, is there times when she's watching something and then you're you're going good night? She's just as bad as me. She's asleep half the time before I am. <laughs> you guys, you guys are really uh, living it up there in Miami. Celebrity lifestyle down there, right? Yeah, you know we uh, <laughs> we live like we're ninety five. <laughs> We are back here on the box score. Uh, guys, Ryan Tanhill dropped a bit of a bombshell on you guys, revealing that he goes to bed at 9.30. Paulie, does this take wow. away from Paulie uh, a few points from his bro rating? <sighs> no, because you look at he's going to bed with. And, uh, you know, uh. you don't need to go out shopping when you have what he has at home. I mean, that's... That'd be kind of silly. Defeats the purpose. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I find this thing interesting. I, I, going back to Watt, I remember uh, during... Uh, what do you call it? Hard Knocks, he said... I, I, go, I try to go to bed by 8, 8.30 and get up at, you know, 6. And I was doing the math, and I'm no math major, but that's like 10 hours of sleep. Gee, I don't think I could do that. I don't think I could get more than 8, maybe 8 and a half hours of sleep. I'm, I like napping, but I, I can't sleep that long. I, do you guys ever, have you ever gone to bed before 10 o'clock? When was the last time? Before 10, asleep. You know, you know what? I'm actually... Um, Not in L.A. Either. And my wife gets really annoyed at me because it's finally Friday, and, like, we'll sit down and go to watch TV, and I fall asleep yeah. immediately by, like, Seven o'clock, eight o'clock, or something like that, and I sleep for like three hours snoring on the couch while she's trying to watch TV, and then eventually she's like, "Would you just get up and go to bed already?" I'm like, "No, I'm good, I'm good." And then I finally give up. Like, all right, I have to go. Well, you get your second uh, wind for no, eleven until so, the fucking she night. She's so it? annoyed. I don't blame her either, but uh, I'm a big Friday night crash early, yeah. like twelve hour sleep guy. It's pretty late. All right. Well, there's something that could be uh, good news for the bros out there. Uh, you guys broke the story off of Val Kilmer's uh, Facebook page that Top Gun might be making a Top Gun two. Uh, Fritzy, you're a guy that uh, would like to throw his head into the, the hat in the ring, maybe Project Greenlight. What do you think the uh, storyline would be for Top Gun 2? Top Gun 2, knowing how my mind works, and I'm sure the guys can attest to it, uh, mm. Top Gun 2 would have a lot of scantily clad women. Uh, they would all be fighting over each other for, uh, for me. And uh, there would definitely be a long uh, volleyball scene where uh, we're all uh, just uh, kind of hanging out and... Uh, and that's what happens when body starts Any slapping. planes or any airplanes? I don't think there'd be any airplanes involved. Maybe, no. maybe, maybe I would get on a plane. And any military be... tone? No. There, no. Would be, there would be a couple of hot flight attendants like on a plane. Those I, would I, be I wouldn't top be... buns. Top buns. That's, that's perfect. I, w I wouldn't be personally nice. flying any planes, and that really wouldn't be where the uh, story would be going. They'd, be a, they'd pull the curtain, and you always wonder what's going on on the other side of the curtain between like first class and, uh, and coach, and there'd be a lot of peanuts and snacks flying everywhere. Mm. Something like that. Food. Food. food and women. See, and how many uh, beach volleyball <laughs> scenes you th might think uh, will be in Top Gun 2? Well, I think there's going to be a lot of pressure on here. And, and uh, do you revisit the volleyball scene since it's so iconic, or right. do you let it stand as is? It's yeah. kind of like seeing if you remember when Godfather 3 tried to do that assassination scene, right. and they had the music playing, and they tried to imitate Godfather 1 it's not good. with the assassination scene. And they tried, and yeah. they did okay, but it just wasn't Godfather 1. Right. Uh, Seaton, I want to know, uh, at, uh, if you could rate the burn that you got on your arms that day uh, playing volleyball. <laughs> uh, well, I could tell you the uh, tan that I had from here down with just that shirt on was awesome. Um, man, we were out there for a little bit. I, I got a little color. Not, not too bad, but you know, this Irish skin, uh, it burns pretty easily. So uh, it just captured the Adonis-like feel of the day even more. <laughs> Hey, McLovin, what's the one sequel that you would like to see uh, be made? Um, a lot of the movies I like have like a historical ending. Like, and he dies at the end of Gandhi, so Gandhi two wouldn't be as good. <laughs> Titanic, they can't. Do yeah, that. that'd be tough. Titanic two, yeah, there's. It'd be make a lot of money though. James Cameron's gold. It's yeah. the, the, you know what I think would well? do well? Citizen top. Kane two. No, no. Heather's. He's dead. I think. Yeah, More think, apple uh, cider rules. A Star Wars movie would do well. Another one of those. Just saying, saying. Just throwing it out there. All right, uh, we will see if that's going to get made. Stick around. It was uh, week 10 in the Dan Duel Challenge. We will go over the results after this.
Boo! All right, uh, welcome back to Box Score. Guys, it was uh, week 10 in the Dan Duel Challenge. McLovin, there have been some ups and downs in all of this. Uh, what have been some of the highest highs and lowest lows so far on the fantasy front? Well, I'll tell you. Week one, I was number one out of a huge group that was awesome, like this game is easy, and it's been nothing but mediocrity ever since. Last night, I was poised for big, oh. big money. I, was, I had a good week, but I had A.J. Green and Tyler Eifert going. That was a low. All right, we shall get to that in just a second. Well, one man who was not feeling the lows was El Jefe, the boss. Dan Patrick had a pretty good week, fantasy-wise, uh, after a string of last place finishes. He finished second in the Dandel League this week, and he got double-digit scoring from pretty much everyone in his lineup, but no heavy hitters. Fritzy, do you think week. Dan is going to be uh, a get aggressive in finding a big gun for week 11? I think he's going to try to get aggressive and go with the momentum of finishing in second. I'm just relieved because I talked uh, as, as as good as I can. I know the guys always tease me. My trash talk isn't exactly uh, something you're, you're fearful of. But I did say some things about Dan and his picking ability and that uh, he was going to have an awful week. He ended up finishing second. So I'm glad that uh, he uh, didn't uh, finish at the, at the very, very top because that would have made me look really bad with some of the things I said last week. Well, yeah, it was Operation Bootstraps. Well, he vacated the bottom spot, which left place uh, left space for Paul Papps to come in and take the uh, not so coveted hoop head <laughs> award. Paul, you stayed with D'Angelo Williams this week and he didn't get it done. Is it time to hop <laughs> off the Williams bandwagon or are you going to give him one more shot? You know what? I don't really care. I, I, I didn't mind wearing the poop head and uh, I thought it was pretty good TV for about a minute or two. Um, it is funny though. I love how Dan alters bets and challenges depending on the results. It's one of his great techniques. He's been doing it for years. He like doesn't pin down a bet, and then if he wins a bet, he pins it down after the fact. And if he loses a bet, it just kind of goes away in the wind forever. But uh, you know, the poop bet was actually not the first minute was not bad because it's not really covering it like this. But the kind of smells and mixed with the sweat from your brow, oh. it's not something you'd want to wear for more than five minutes. It gets series. a little warm in there. It, it gets unpleasant. So you guys. Yeah. You guys have all sweated into this poop bag? Yeah, the, the, the residue of everyone else's uh, perspiration and breathing is... But is now, right? here's I'm one thing, amazed you can put it on, Steve. Here's so, one thing I can I guarantee. Put it on first. Yeah, <laughs> uh, none of the Danettes will actually walk 20 steps to the left and rinse it out and wash it. Definitely not. They will leave it and then just put it I on. I feel like that's part of the punishment, is everyone else's sweat and spittle. Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, someone sneezes in so there. So gross. To the man who first donned the <laughs> poop head, Seton, uh, out, uh, out did you one point better, to be exact. Uh, he came in fourth place uh, after taking the risk and going with both Raider wideouts, Michael Crabtree and Amari Cooper. Would you make this gamble again down the road with another pair of receivers, or was this just a one-time shot-in-the-dark scenario? Uh, no, I would probably do that again. Uh, the one thing that I did learn this week is stop playing injured players. Uh, that would probably yeah. help me out a lot. I had guys with like, you know, feet <coughs> falling off and stuff, and I'm like, no, you know what? I believe in him. He's gonna do it this week. Just a flash. Uh, no, of course yeah. he isn't. His, you know, his whole body's falling apart. Of course he's not gonna play well. That's what I took away from this mm. week. All right, uh, to McLovin, he has consistently been in the top three all year. And this week was no different. He came in third place this week with Cam Newton and Martavis Bryant producing big for him this week. Now you hopped on the Tyler Eifert train and that cost you. Is it time to abandon ship on Eifert or are you uh, going to give him another try? I have such a love-hate relationship with Tyler Eifert. I dropped him about week five and then he came back with two touchdowns <laughs> and I was like, curse you Tyler Eifert. Then last night I was literally throwing things at the screen because Tyler Eifert Unfortunately, could not catch those. Let me ask you something, You know stocks. Now, Tyler Arford is a stock that's down. Shouldn't you buy him for next week? Because he will, I would think, be somewhat of a, his value will go down FanDuel. Going back and the, the odds of him having another three drops. Well, that'd be the smart approach. But I like to see who is really hot on Sunday. Right. And, and then play him again, even though he's going to get a double team. And, and it costs you a lot of money. Yeah, that's why I haven't been <laughs> first in a while, Paulie. Okay, Thank got you. it. All, All right. right. Well, the big winner wasn't the Broncos, but it was their super fan, Todd Fritz. You brought the hammer with 130 points, and you, you struck gold with taking a risk on Antonio Brown, who dropped 32 points. Is he going to be your uh, go-to big gun going forward? Uh, I'm going to look very strongly at Antonio Brown, but again, I always have those concerns. You have for a big week, you feel like you're compelled to play them again, but then as soon as you do, they don't, they, they don't have back-to-back -back big weeks. 
Uh, I was a little, more than a little disappointed. Owen Daniels only had uh, 1.9 points, no thanks to uh, Peyton Manning and then bringing in Brock Osweiler, but 6.6 uh, .6 from uh, Amari Cooper and 1.9 from uh, Owen Daniels kept me from uh, even getting a bigger Dude, you're complaining? Out. You had Antonio Brown with no Ben Roethlisberger That's true. supposed to play. Well, I, 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 Brown was great. Up. I loved everybody else. The Steelers defense had like 16 and Graham Gano had like 12, 10 or 12 does, points. Does a FanDuel win um, make up for the fact that your Broncos are careening towards obscurity? Um, no. I am very concerned <laughs> about what lies ahead for Denver. I know they got a game. We, we got the, at the end of Thanksgiving, they got to play New England. Now you said we, because you said they mm. Monday. I go all back day. and forth. If they, if they, if they start nose You're not a big pronoun guy in, in general. No. You never use pronouns ever in life and emails. I don't. But you, you, you've been saying we for years with the Broncos, and you came in Monday, and the first thing you said is they. I did. I distanced mm. myself, and sometimes is it you we or they? I think you should declare it. Uh, I'm going to say we. I, you don't realize it sometimes, but when the team's playing poorly, you know, we you, are playing. Then well, you, we then you start going poorly, they. Yeah. But if, <laughs> if I'm the Bronco fan, I say I am. I have to say we. And even if they go on a big so tailspin, we suck. If we are struggling right now. We don't know what we're going to get from Brock Osweiler at your Soldier Field, uh, Chicago Bears. That's fair. We uh, may have some problems in the playoffs if we don't. And the Broncos team. went wee, wee, wee all the way into the locker room with the loss. Congratulations, Fritzy. Uh, oh, we don't forget to uh, watch the uh, box scores FanDuel Draft Day every Thursday. All right, uh, coming up, uh, we're going to check the injury report here on the box score. But first, uh, we must take a break and remind you that the Ram Heavy Duty with its best in class towing, torque, and horsepower doesn't need one. No IR for the, the Ram Heavy Duty. Always going, always going strong. Get more facts at RamTrucks.com. Guts, glory, Ram. The Box School presents Great Moments in DP Show. Yesterday. Keep going. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Great moments in DP show history. We are closing up shop here in the box score. Classic moment there when Reggie Miller took McLovin from behind. If that's a podcast, he tackled him from behind. Gave you a few bumps and bruises there. But I'm thinking, McLovin, that it may have softened you up because yesterday on the box score, you actually injured yourself simply by doing this leg kick and laughing here. Now, are you okay or do we need to put you on uh, injured reserve? I mean, look at you. you <laughs> you just took yourself out. I know. I saw the audience network was running a promo on my injured hamstring. <laughs> uh, I'm just thinking about workman's comp. I tend to cramp because uh, I often run at night. But all you do is drink drinks all day. You have like eight drinks on your desk. I know. I have a hydration problem. There might be something desperately wrong with me. I like. I I get cramps. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, oh, Fritzy. I know where you guys are going with that line. No, no. Oh, okay. Well, I guess we could go there. It's not that time of the month. McGlo uh, Fritzy, you seem like a guy that gets injured every once mm. in a while. Could you give him any advice to keep himself safe? Um, just be uh, be more gentle with his body. He definitely needs to hydrate. Oh, I've God, had uh, I've had gross. some various levels issues with. Uh, with potassium and magnesium and phosphorus and all kinds of uh, electrolyte issues, but uh, you know maybe uh, some, get some Gatorade in there on top of the water and the coffee. And, uh... Why do you make this sound so gross, dude? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you treat get your body like Gatorade a in there. Yeah, if he, if he mixes in some uh, some electrolyte uh, driven good beverages, point. that would be that would be a good, good way for Yeah, him. Brondo, it's what plants need. Fritzy, who's on tomorrow? Uh, we will talk to Michael B. Jordan, uh, who plays... Uh, you promised you get Michael Jordan on the show. I do. Oh, I do. Mission that's accomplished. Uh, I don't want to say, unfortunately, Michael B. Jordan, but because that's not fair to Michael B. Jordan, who's also going to be a great guest in the New York City Man Cave uh, for Creed. And Jim Miller, who wrote the ESPN Saturday Night Live books, will also join us in studio and uh, possibly a few other surprises as well. All right, yeah. just give me some Mickey on the way out here, would you, Fritzy? Just tell him to watch the box score tomorrow. Could you do that for us? Watch the box score tomorrow. Michael B. Jordan for crying out loud is going to join us at the New York Man Cave. And Jim Miller, ESPN, Saturday Night Live Kid, catch that chicken, you old Italian bastard. Another hernia. There we go. Get that guy a trust. Cheers, my friends. The podcast is available on iTunes or at podcastone.com. Hey. I don't know a lot about sports, but I can drink a lot of beer. My motto is simple, C's get degrees. Need a long, inappropriate hug? I'm your man. I think I'm smarter than you, because I probably am. Hey, thanks for watching the box score. Holy cow!